Hi, my name is Allison Ellis and I teach in Columbus County. I teach kindergarten through sixth, sixth grade elementary art at two schools. I am still in my beginning years as a teacher and I've been trying to find new ways to help me grow as a teacher and Dunner's Choose has been a beneficial tool during this pandemic in helping me bring my art lessons to life, providing creativity for all my students. So with this presentation, why choose Donors Choose, I will provide reasons to choose it as well as successful tips when using it. All right, let's get started. What is Donors Choose? <clears throat> you may have heard of Donors Choose but didn't know what it was. Well, that was the case for me. After hearing about other teachers using it and getting their projects funded, I decided to do my own research before using it myself. Donors Choose is an online charity that allows individuals to donate directly to public school classroom projects. It was founded in the year 2000 to help all teachers get the materials they need for their students. Donors Choose first begins when a teacher creates a project idea for their classroom. It's great because you can choose your own project idea. Then others donate to help fund that project, which is done by sharing your project to get it out there so others can see it. Donors Choose helps you in every step of the way. It approves your projects, they purchase the materials once it is funded, and they ship the materials directly to your school. They are very supportive to teachers. I get emails through Donors Choose all the time to keep me updated on my own projects. They also suggest new ideas for new projects and they provide ways to get funding faster. Located on the Donors Choose website, you can find their mission statement, and it states, We make it easy for everyone to help a teacher in need, moving us closer to a nation where students in every community have the tools and experiences they need for a great education. I am going to provide you with reasons to use Donors Choose. Now, these are reasons that I chose to use Donors Choose and um, reasons that I know that other teachers have used it as well. One, budget cuts or low funding in your school or in your county. Um, two, you have a new project idea that you want to start up. And three, it is super easy. So the first reason is budget cuts or low funding. Now, we have all experienced budget cuts or low funding in our schools or county at some point or another. Um, sometimes I think the arts um, and some other areas you know, might be affected more than others, or at least I have experienced. But think about how budget cuts or low funding might affect your lessons that you provide to your students. Does it affect you bringing in new supplies or even expensive supplies that you want for a project? Um, it could even limit the types of project that you're doing with your students. Are they getting everything that they should be getting in your lessons? Are they learning? Are they growing? Um, it could also, like I said, it can affect your students' educational needs. They need to be um, excelling in what they're learning. They need to be learning more. They need to learn um, <clears> the <throat> study of habits of mind with exploring new materials, um, learning to problem solve with new materials. So think about how um, what you don't have and how it's affecting them because of um, no support in funds. So Donors Choose is a great resource for teachers to get materials and supplies for their classroom when there is no or limited money available. Okay, so the second reason to use um, Donors Choose is when you have a new project idea. It's great to use Donors Choose for this reason, especially as mentioned before, when funds are low to support it. It lets others know what awesome projects, ideas you're doing or planning on doing with your class. Also, students can also participate with sharing ideas for a new project. It also shows awareness for the arts, which is great. And it also shows if you are collaborating with other teachers and incorporating other content areas such as literacy, social emotional learning, um, history as you might would do with art history. And um, sometimes if you can't think of a project idea, Donors Choose provides ideas that could be funded fast. Now I've had three project ideas fully funded. The first two were funded within two months apart back in the early spring. One for books about artists and another for painting supplies. My last project that I had funded in September was for sixth grade sketchbooks, drawing pencils, and how-to books for drawing. Now anytime that I think of a project idea, I think of do I have the funds um, to support it? 
do I have the materials already? And if I don't, I go for it. I set up a, a new Donors Choose project and I get it rolling. Here are photos um, from my first Donors Choose project, Books for Budding Artists. Is it, a, it is important to take photos of your kids using the materials or supplies that you purchase with your Donors Choose projects um, because you will provide images um, in the last steps of your Donors Choose project once it is funded. Now my students um, are reading the books um, and learning more about background knowledge of the artist as they have um, finished their um, projects in class and not only are they learning about it, they are practicing their literacy skills. Now, these are photos from my second um, Donors Choose project called Pandemic Painting. I provided um, pictures of students working as well as finished projects. Um, pandemic Painting, um, I wanted students to learn new techniques of painting without having to use water with painting because I was on a cart and it was very difficult for students to paint. and have all those supplies for regular painting with water and paint brushes um, on a cart. So students were learning to use dabbers, finger painting, painting with Q-tips, and um, paint sticks and things like that. As I mentioned earlier, it is super easy to start a project using Donors Choose. When setting up a Donors Choose project, there are a few steps just to get started. Of course, you have to create an account and then you provide a short overview of your students and your school. What type of school do you work at? How many students do you have? And describe the situation. I usually begin saying that I am that I have the privilege of teaching kindergarten through sixth grade art, not only at one, but two Title I schools in a rural district. This is where I'm really describing um, the school setting. And I talk about how my time is split between two schools and I generally only see my students once every two weeks. And I try to make every single moment of class meaningful. I am really trying to grab my audience's attention and draw them in into the situation. Next, you're going to begin shopping for approved materials. You have to remember that the higher the amount that you're going to ask for, the harder and longer that it might take to get funded. Um, $300 to $400 is a good start. Um, my first project, I did books, and books do get funded faster than most items. And a lot of times, there are donors that will match another donor's donation, and that um, gives you doubled donations. My first donor's choose um, was Books for Budding Artists, and I received double donations, and it was funded within a day. My other Donors Choose projects took roughly about a month. Next, you're going to create a creative title and describe your project. Using a creative title also draws your donors in, um, such as when I use books for budding artists, um, pandemic painting, um, sixth grade art survival kit. It describes what they're going to be doing, but also has a creative title for it. And next, you're going to describe your project as a whole. So how will you be using these materials for your students' educational needs and their experience. So you're going to give specifics, like um, what are the items are going to be used for. For my pandemic painting project, I noted that students will be learning new painting techniques, such as using new materials that they hadn't used before, um, like dabbers, paint sticks, and finger painting to recreate paintings inspired by Frida Kahlo portraits and Vincent van Gogh's sunflower paintings. And these were specific because during the pandemic, um, I was on a cart and it was hard to incorporate painting using water and paint brushes when I could not fit it all on a cart. And it's not too difficult um, to create a donor's choose project. Your project does need to be presentable and it has to be beneficial to your students' educational needs. Um, in the next few slides, I will go back over the steps of creating a Donors Choose project, providing screenshots from the Donors Choose page. So first, you're going to have to um, create an account with Donors Choose. And the second step, um, you're going to choose standard project for the type of project that you will be creating. Step three, you provide a short overview of your students and your school. Provide the grade level, the number of students. For my first two projects, um, it was for all 700 of my students 
where my last project was just for my 76th grade students. Then describe your students in your school. Um, the highlighted sentence helps to grab the attention. I stated that we are going to see this new change for this new school year as a positive group. And this one was used for my third Dennis Choose, the sixth grade art survival kit. Um, next is when the shopping begins. So step four, you're gonna select a vendor. Now, as you can see in the image um, that I provided, that there are a lot of vendors to choose from. And I use Blick for art supplies whenever I have funds through the county, but I've noticed that there are some things for projects that I've wanted to use, but Blick does not offer them. And I found them on Amazon Business. So usually when I do donors choose, I choose Amazon Business and I just set it up through my account and then I shop for the materials. And then I send it to donors choose for approval and they will let me know if the items are approved or not or if they're still available. And if they're not approved, you just go back and you keep um, shopping until you get the right list. And make sure that you are really setting yourself a budget because you don't want it too high um, where it's going to take too long to get it funded. So these are items that I purchased um, through Amazon Business with two of my donors choose. Now the first photo is, an, um, is showing books. My first uh, donors choose was called Books for Budding Artists and I was um, purchasing books for my donors choose about artists where students can learn contextual information about artists, um, their styles, and even focus on literacy with reading. Now, usually whenever I begin a lesson, I think about how do I open it? Am I gonna read a book or show images? And I found that reading books is a good way, especially with my younger kids and my older kids like it as well. I got this idea um, from other teachers who um, do a similar thing. And I would always ask my librarian, do you have this book um, in store? And if she didn't, I was like, hmm, how could I go about with getting these books? So then I decided to do a donor's choose. Now, some of the books that I purchased were Matisse's Garden, The Great Wave, Frida Kahlo, Keith Haring, when Pegaso met Mutis, and these are just some of them. Um, I didn't take a picture of all of them because I got a lot, but these are some of them. The next photo is um, a picture of painting supplies that I used during the pandemic this past year and I'm still using. It was hard um, teaching kids about painting while I was moving from class to class on a cart. So it was very difficult to incorporate water. So I was like, how could I get my students painting without water. So I um, started up a donor's choose um, with, to get materials where students can learn how to paint using alternate ways without water. So I chose paint dabbers, acrylic paint pens, acrylic markers, paint sticks, um, squeezable paint brushes. And the students really enjoy these. And of course, these aren't all the materials that I ordered. These are just um, a few that I selected to take a picture of. Now this is when you're gonna um, provide details about your project. The, this is very important. Um, so step five, you're gonna give your project a creative title. My first project was Books for Budding Artists. The second one was Pandemic Painting. The third one was Sixth Grade Art Survival Kit. Within my titles, it gives a small description of what um, the project is gonna be about in a creative way, in a very short way. But the next and step six, you're gonna really give the project details and describe it. What are you gonna be doing? How are you gonna be using it? So provide your donors or your potential donors with a visual of how the materials will be used. Will the materials be used at home? How will these materials make a difference in your students' learning? You really want to give a great detailed description um, so they will know what is expected of the materials whenever they are funded. So with my first project, Books for Budding Artists, I described how literacy can be just as important in art as using paint, paper, glue sticks, and things of that sort. Um, and the books um, would assist students with background knowledge about artists that they needed to effectively examine and experience art. So I was really getting into about how these books were going to be used. And my second um, project, it was pandemic painting. 
and I described how being on a cart and going from class to class, it was difficult for students to experience painting with water and paint brushes because I could not fit all of that on a moving cart. And this project would be um, teaching students new techniques for painting during a pandemic that was creative and it would help students grow and explore new materials with painting. My third project idea um, is sixth grade art survival kit. And I described how um, getting sketchbooks and how to drawing books and drawing pencils um, would teach students new skills and that using these sketchbooks, they would um, students would use this as an assessment to see how much they were achieving and they could reflect on it um, throughout the year from beginning, middle, and end. Um, these are your final steps. Um, step seven, once your Donors Choose project is approved, um, you're going to share it through Facebook, email, text message, and there's some other um, alternatives um, to share it through as well. Um, now, getting the word out is very critical because you really want donors to see your project. You want them to know what you're doing and you want them to want to help fund it. I share mine with my principal and she shares it on our school's Facebook page. I share it with my family, my friends through text message and Facebook, and then they share it with others. I even shared um, more than um, one time in the week because um, I really want people who didn't see it the first time to really see it and want to get involved in wanting to help fund my project. Now on step eight, after your project is funded, you're going to take pictures of students using the new materials or creating um, um, projects with these materials and you're going to write a thank you impact letter. Now this thank you impact letter, um, you're going to tell the donors what this project has done for your students and you're going to share what they've learned through it, how they enjoyed using the materials, just describe um, the impact that is done for your students' educational needs. I never thought that I would have chose um, Dunner's Cheese before I did my research because when I knew nothing about Dunner's Cheese, I assumed it was too complicated and I didn't think I had the time to get it started. And I never thought that I would have had so much support from Dunner's Cheese and the donors to get projects funded. Instead, I was paying tons of money out of pocket for these new um, project ideas because I was limited on art funds. I also thought that you had to create a project that was suggested or that it had to be core curriculum teachers who could use it. But I was wrong. Donors Choose guides you every step of the way and makes it easy for anyone to help a teacher in need. So think to yourself, would you choose Donors Choose? All you have to do is think of a project idea and ask yourself, do I have the funds? Will it benefit my students' educational experience and needs? How soon do I need the materials and supplies? Once you answer these questions, go for it. Use Donors Choose to help fund a new project idea for you and your students. But remember, your project needs to be presentable. These successful tips that I provided will help you when creating your Donors Choose project. Thank you.